Hey guys, how's it going? Back playing on the bike a little bit. I got a little bit of time, so I figured I'd uh, try to knock something out. And uh, I was bouncing back and forth between handlebars and exhaust. And handlebars, and I went more and more towards the exhaust. Uh, and I'm trying to come up with uh, some kind of pattern or solution or something, something. Uh, the stand that the plug picture that run down the end of the wire that was bolted and stood right there so I just unbolted that and got it out of my way I figure I'll worry about that later and right now I want to worry about steering the exhaust I kind of want to tuck it in I'm thinking kind of close to the motor and uh, we're using one of these uh, plumbers deals there It'd been nicer if it was thicker but uh, I was thinking trying to wrap it around kind of tuck it around the motor and pop out underneath and I figure it hang some kind of exhaust there so just to get you caught up I went through a couple of different things and uh, we're scratching around the hoard I was thinking cutting up one of the empty um, map gas cans you know kind of make like a muffler out of that underneath there somewhere drill out the front and slosh cut the back or something and I just kept dancing around and went looking at my hoard and I found um, this guy just an old-fashioned fire extinguisher yeah, yeah. Rotate the end of it, and you pull the handle, and you give it a yank, and you fill it with powder there, and we chooch out of that. So I'm thinking about that somehow hanging on. And I think I kind of want to leave the handle on me. I'll take that plug out, and um, what could even possibly do too is maybe drill holes across the bottom of it, and the more that you pull the handle out, so I think that's got a big diaphragm on the inside of it. You could expose more holes or less holes. <laughs> Make it louder or quieter. Anyway, thinking uh, maybe trying to tuck that down right in there somewhere. Like that, like that, I don't know. Uh, but it was kind of nasty looking color. That's the color of it. So I decided I'm going to start playing with a wire wheel and just bring out some of the bronzy, brassy kind of look to it. I like that better. So. I am right now so I'm gonna go do that I'm gonna go keep buffing this thing up and uh, see what it looks like and then we'll hold it back up there and uh, we'll see what uh, how it looks and I kind of want to incorporate that bracket too I think the bracket will look pretty cool once I get the uh, the two colors different from each other you know all right back in a second and after a little cleaning I got the label that was on there Too bad it wasn't like uh, I probably could just like rub like red paint or something on it and then wipe it off and let it go into the uh, the pores, make it stand out a little bit, or whatever color I do the bike actually. You know, let that writing kind of pop out. And I don't know, I'm thinking, yeah, throw that anywhere over there. I could take that plug out, I can make that the inlet. Nothing says that that has to be the outlet. Kind of kick it on an angle that way. Drill some holes underneath it. And then if you pull that handle, it'll go from like, you know, quiet mode to loud ass city mode or vice versa. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we'll make it so that uh, that already kind of shows. Wish I could tuck it in there. Problem is the handle. I if I could just kick it just past enough to clear it. Get that pedal spinning up there, you know. And what we do, have it so pipe comes in on that side. I should. I want you to be able to read the writing, but you might be able to read the writing from the other side. And would that be enough room to get the handle to open? I can modify the handle too if I have to. Hmm. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. Let's see if you'll see anything, you know. Uh, yeah. Here, the chain's gonna block part of it, but that won't be so bad. And that way, I'll probably use the bracket. More or less, you know. Gotta make it so that uh, maybe it disassembles. 
Hmm. Decision, decisions. So I gotta go stare at that for a little bit. Figure out what I wanna do. And when I figure that out, I'll share it with you. How's that? Can I get away with that? Maybe. Eh. I'll sit up further in the front. I'm gonna go mock it up on a little jack and see if I can open that valve and do that part of it. And then you'll see. How far they're ready. It'll be one of those things you don't notice right away, but if you look at it real close, then you'll see it. All right, so that's the battle plan. I'm gonna mock that up and see what we can do with that. All right, so I took that plug out of there and then I drilled that opening to about the size that that fitting is sitting on there. So I figured I need to attach that to the muffler anyway. I'd be able to have some way to uh, put the two of them together. So I figure I can go try the TIG welder with um, silicone bronze rods. It's more of a solder for brass and bronze. But, I've never done it before, so it's either going to go blow a hole right through it and have it go kapoof. <laughs> I know I should practice on a piece of scrap, but sometimes in no time, better than the present. Figure it out. So, uh, I think I'm going to lay the wire right in the gap there and see if I can... Uh, Just kind of like get a puddle. I should put something in the center of that, shouldn't I? Do you happen to be the right size? No, I wasn't going to be that lucky. All right, turn back on in a second. Let me go find something to hold that. All right, I tried all kinds of clamps and everything, and uh, I decided to go with duct tape. And we'll let it smolder its way off. I just got to get a couple of tacks on it. Everything else was like... Seem better as an idea than in actuality, let's put it that way. And see some ground. And just Alright. Let's see if I can make a little puddle without blowing through. If it's on steel, it's easy because the steel melts at a lot higher temperature. This stuff's all kind of melted at the same temperature, I think. You gotta do what you gotta do though. Me, yeah, I get all that crap cleaned off of there and uh, see if we can kind of get a puddle going around it. Alright, so that made a mess. <laughs> it's on there, but it's a mess. I'll grind it up afterwards, but it's uh... <laughs> Alright. I would have been better off with solder, I think. So, 
Uh, I got a fitting on there and now I want to be able to, to attach that end to that end. And uh, the way I'm going to think about going to get there is this is the original pipe. Problem is, of course, it comes off, bends totally the wrong direction. That does nothing for me. So I want to be able to make it have a, a sharp turn, but we'll have a curve on. So I think I'm going to slice that off right there. And that can get welded onto that. It just about fits inside. I'll probably uh, egg this out a little bit with a reamer. And uh, I'll weld that to there. And then this, this collar can still spin to go on there. So that'll end up being something like that. And then I want to take, I have a couple of these. And uh, this was bent before I, before I had that option. I was trying to do it like that. But anyway, you'll get the idea. I think I want to try wrapping it. Uh, and try to match the spacing of that pulley as, as close as I can and then come around and down into that one and I'll have to join two of these together so you know one will be full to wherever that crimp is and then these guys seem like they fit over pretty good and then whatever is left on the you know, whatever's left um, this part of it, if it was straight, you know, I'll cut it. I'll try soldering the two of those together. So it'll be a, come out of there, go around that bend and into there, I am thinking. So, uh, I'm going to go from thinking to trying. And we'll see what happens. Let me, uh, start with cutting that off and uh, welding those two together and go from there. Yeah, I'm getting a little closer. Um, cut that off and try to, at first, I, I kind of wanted to match and keep an even bend going around here, which I would have liked to have done. Unfortunately, by the time all this hogwash gets started and we start getting into the squirrel, we're already, you know, that far past. And I can't make a too sharp of a bend. This stuff just collapses. So I decided to go and like kind of eyeball the frame behind it and see maybe we'll pick up that line. I'll, I'll try to tuck in. And uh, you can see, I still have a little bit more curve in the do. But I figure, um, again, that stuff's pliable enough just to kind of move around by your hand. So I think I might make the two ends more permanent and I can kind of wrench down on them a little bit. And then I can just kind of mold it to where I want. But I think that's a pretty good idea. This is the other half of whatever I did with it. It's over in the, over in the, uh, the bench anyway. It's that other length that I had curved. I cut that off so that that flare is now bolted onto that side. And it seems like it's a good size to, to grab. I'll rip it off. To grab that collar. So I could solder those two pieces together. That yeah, should be okay. Uh, I think by the time the heat gets there, it's definitely not gonna be hot enough for that to be an issue. And uh, I could shorten that guy up another, I can knock another three quarters of an inch out of that and tuck that thing in that much further. And I got to get rid of that plastic uh, coupler in there anyway. So I may take this apart and see if I can cut it back and then uh, if I can get a flaring tool in it or just hammer it uh, from the other side and, and make that nut sit right about here. I can move that whole assembly forward, whatever, you know. Yeah, if I can move it you know, that much farther forward, it'll try to help match that bend I'm looking for a little bit better. So I'm gonna go start on that next. And we'll make it a more permanency, kind of like. Right now, the, the collar tightens down before the, um, the, the flare does. I gotta figure out how to get rid of that too. Maybe even uh, if I have to put a spacer behind there. We'll see. Back in a minute. Well, it's getting to that part of the night that I have pepperoni pizza with my name on it. So this is where I am. Um, the sleeve is attached to that. So you can unthread this, it'll come off and you can unthread uh, that guy and it'll come apart. All this is tight right now though. And 
again, like I said, I just I decided to kind of like follow that frame line. I don't want to keep tweaking it right now until final assembly because the more you bend that stuff, the harder it gets. This um, this uh, soft copper, uh, flexible copper. If you work the piece a little bit, it, it hardens right up and it gets brittle. So no sense in going crazy at the moment. Uh, that's tight. I ended up cutting some of the nut off on both of them. And uh, that just allowed me to run all the way down to the flare and tighten them up. This is not soldered yet. And uh, the next thing I'm looking at is how I want to support that, um, that tank under there. The fire extinguisher. And uh, I think the whole bracket's kind of gaudy looking. So I'm thinking that uh, maybe I'll just cut like the front bracket free and this rear cradle free and then we'll attach them straight up and straight up well, maybe uh i don't know a socket or something like that we'll weld in between there uh and i gotta cut the rest of this uh, kickstand assembly out of here i think that'll be pretty good i, I didn't want to run it this way because i don't know still if i'm gonna have uh, an issue with carburetors so i'm trying to leave a bunch of room open for for uh, carb stuff and i can actually put the Two screws right back in that sucker, and the, that shroud will go right back over the um, the spark plug holder. And then there's the uh, thing that goes on there. Yet that works out good. And it tucks in. I think it'd be an issue. The copper should also help um, dissipate heat from the cylinder head. And on this side, you can't really see it at all. Everything just kind of disappears, which is fine. And as like I said, I want to make sure I, I got this piece of crap chain on there, but to give the idea of where that's going to go, I want to make sure I clear all that. So, uh, you know, I just have to favor it that way I hear. Uh, I can't rotate, and people are talking, well, you rotate the head and you can make the exhaust and the intake go in different directions. You can't, it's a, that the base is rectangular. Uh, it's longer this way than it is this way, so you can't take it off and shift it one direction, and you can't take it off and spin it 180 out because there's ports that are internal from the bottom of the crankcase, crankcase that go up to the top, so uh, they would not line up. I kind of like that. It doesn't. Um, I wanted to try to maintain that swoop in the bottom of the frame there. Yeah, I don't want to lose that with uh, exhaust and stuff kind of impeding it. So I think on this bike, it's actually kind of better playing it down and just kind of hiding it a little bit. And when you do notice the exhaust, you say, hey, that's a fire extinguisher. Again, I could, I could highlight the writing on that. So. Well, pedals will clear everything fine. I can make some guards up for it later too if I need. Little heat shields. And this should darken up as soon as it runs. This should get darker like that. Or like a dark copper copper anyway. So. That's for another day. So I think uh, next time I go work on this, I'll probably work on mounting the extinguisher to the bottom without that big ugly bracket. And then uh, maybe handlebars, try to figure out where they're gonna start. Uh, going and then if everything plays together well I can start making stuff more permanent you know I like it seats got to go down and back with that back tire more not staying like that I'd like to make a um a decompression valve. Again, this is cylinder head and the cylinder is all one piece. Because I would like to be able to make it so that you pedal, the, you get the back wheel going like a flywheel, and uh, you can put the wheel into gear with this, and then that'll start spinning the motor, but you have to have the motor decompressed to be able to go do that. And once it gets uh, some RPMs going in it, you uh, uh, seal it back up again, and then you now it's hitting compression and it starts on its own So I think I may when I take the motor out I may take it on the milling machine and mill out uh, Probably line right up with the plugs probably uh, take these two center fins 
out or you know from this far in I think I might drill and tap it and actually put like a big ball valve if I can get something really close to it and, and tucked in tight so you're not increasing the overall compression too much but uh, use the, the ball valve instead of trying to stick a regular valve inside here because um, again you'd have to work from the other side way up in a hole to try to get that and I got one shot at this if I ruin this I'm screwed you know it's not like I can it's not like it's a china doll motor where you say oh, well let's go get another one try that it's uh it's not an over with so I, that's what kind of what I'm thinking I actually was thinking if I could take the spark plug out and, and tee in with the spark plug but uh then I'll get the spark too far out of the hole I think wish the plug was offset it made life easier I don't know, maybe do another spark plug. Do actually another spark plug hole right next to it. With uh, some kind of valve built into the plug. I'll worry about that when I get there. Alright guys, I'm going to go shut you down. It's probably getting kind of long now. Anyway, so uh, I'll pick back up on this uh, very shortly.